Good morning, Periscope. So let me get situated here. I'm trying to be on double duty. So let me sign on to Facebook. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Share this out. Sharing is caring. Again, you can share this even if you're watching the replay on Periscope now. And I learned that you can listen to, um, you can just listen uh, audibly um, without ha having to stay on uh, this screen here on Periscope. So if you're watching the replay, you can turn it on and go out of the uh, application. Leave it open. Don't close close it. Just leave it open and you can still hear uh, what's being said without ha having to watch the video. So you can do some other things on your phone <laughs> while you listen to the replay or you can watch the replay. So um, come on in the room, Periscope. Share this out. Sharing is caring. Okay, let me go ahead and get this started on Facebook and turn your Bibles to, wait, let me wait. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, Periscope, Instagrammers, um, replay viewers. We uh, thank God for this day, for this is the day that he has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today, um, on Monday's Motivation, I want to teach briefly about uh the carnal man versus the spiritual man. Real, really quick, we're in the um, uh, the epistle, the letter of First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter three. I will begin reading at verse one. And again, for those who may not know me, let me introduce myself. How rude of me! Um, so, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching Monday's motivations. My name is. Coach Mona, Mona Williams. I am your Christian Empowerment Coach. I am here each and every Monday with Monday's Motivations where I teach biblical information for spiritual transformation. It's all about uh, bringing about the change in our spiritual life. We want to be growing spiritually. We want to constantly be being transformed, right, by the renewing of our mind. So we, we know that uh, is through uh, hearing the word and doing the word, hearing the word and doing the word, and so this is this is um, this is our life, right, as a Christian believer, and so we're in First Corinthians chapter three. I will be reading from the King James Version, and it reads, "And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ." I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. This is Paul speaking. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one said, I am of Paul, and another, I am uh, of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Hmm. Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I'm going to stop right there because this will cover what I want to deal with on this morning. So this is Paul here speaking to the Corinthian church. He's saying, now, first of all, let's say they are Christian believers. They are Christian believers. Paul is speaking to Christian believers. And he's telling them that you are still babes in Christ. He's saying you are saved. You are Christian. But you are not ready. You are not able to handle the weightier things of the Spirit. He says you're not ready. Why? Because I'm hearing about these envyings and stripes, stripes and things that are going on that um, are taking place among you because you're being fleshy. You're being fleshy. You're in your flesh. You're carnal. So being carnal means you're a Christian who is fleshy, meaning you're operating from the appetites from uh, your, your sinful nature. Right, you're not allowing the spirit of God to operate in your life as much as you should. 
So he's saying you're still babes in Christ. You haven't matured uh, to a point where you can receive the deeper matters of the spirit. He says you cannot. So since you're not in that position yet, I'm not going to even try to um, pour and, and sow that into you because you're not ready yet. You can't receive it. It would be a waste, right? Basically what Paul is saying. And so Paul is saying, I'm going to deal with you uh, on the level where you are. I am going to deal with you on the level where you are. And so Paul, the Apostle Paul, talks about three groups of, of um, men and women in Christ. There are three groups, three different categories. So the first one is the natural man. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, I will read that. Paul says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are what? They are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. That's what Paul is telling them. He's like, you're still babes in Christ. You're not ready to handle the weightier matters of the things of the Spirit. So first we have the natural man. And we, we, we are all natural um, due to Adam, right? We're born from Adam. We're Adam's descendants. And so that's our humanness. We're born um, in sin. Good morning, sis. We're born in sin due to Adam's disobedience, but we're also born... Um, as a human being because of Adam and Eve, right? And so there's the natural man. Now, the natural man cannot receive and cannot understand the things of the Spirit. Why? Because, Paul says it, you um, have to relate to the Spirit by the Spirit. You relate to, we relate as human beings on a natural level. So the natural man cannot receive, cannot understand the things of God because of our humanness, because of, uh, uh, we ha at this state, and let me make, make put this here, the natural man is the person who has not accepted Jesus Christ. So they will be those who have not accepted Jesus Christ yet. So all they have is just their humanness, just the natural man. So in that state, you cannot receive and understand the things of the spirit the things of god it, it doesn't make sense because they have to what i just read it be spiritually discerned so that's in our humanness we that's the person who does not have god's holy spirit they have not accepted christ our second group is the spiritual man then when i'm saying man i mean man and woman okay the second um is the spiritual man now that's in the next verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. Let me read it. Then Paul says, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. He says, So those who are spiritual, who are operating in the Spirit of God, right? Who have received God's Holy Spirit through accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and who are spiritually mature enough to handle the weightier matters of the Spirit. They can handle the deeper things of the Spirit. So the spiritual man understands and receives the things of God. They get it. They can get it. They can make sound judgments. And then the, the, uh, Paul tells them, and they are judged of none because they handle themselves the, uh, in a way that they don't receive judgment because they know how to right, rightly judge. They handle themselves in a way that they're not operating in a place or in a way that they bring judgment upon themselves. The Bible says that we are not to judge others thinking that we're better than them because we're more spiritually mature than them or because we're Christians. We shouldn't judge anyone else. Uh, on their sins, we need to look at our own sins and deal with our own sins. Because when we judge someone else, what does the Bible teach us? We end up doing the same things we're judging them for. So, the spiritual man can understand, can receive the things of God, the things of the Spirit, because he has the Spirit of God. And we know that God relates to us spirit to spirit, right? 
God does not relate to us in our humanness, in our natural state, in our flesh, fleshly state. He, he communicates through the spirit. That's why he imparted the spirit of God within us so that he can have that relationship with us, right? <clears throat> so, um, God knows us through the spirit. And so the spiritual man knows God, has accepted Jesus Christ, and has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And this is how we communicate with God. This is the area where we grow and mature and, and develop in our, our spiritual character, the fruits of the Spirit, the character of God, um, where we operate in our, our spiritual giftings, right? And we know the Corinthian church had all the giftings operating, yet they were still carnal. They were fleshly, right? Fleshy. <laughs> And the third uh, group type of uh, Christian is the carnal man. So first we have what? The natural man. This is just in your humanness. You, you, you know, this is the person who has not accepted Jesus Christ. This is just a normal man or, or woman. The second was the spiritual man. A person who has God's Holy Spirit and dwelling within them after accepting what Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And now our last one. That's 100% God now. When we're saying the Spirit of God lives within each and every believer, we're saying that 100% of God has been deposited in our spirit. Man. God has made that investment in each and every believer. And the last group that Paul deals with is the carnal man who he's dealing with in this beginning of this chapter. The carnal man, listen now, understands and receives the things of God because he also has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He also has accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. So the carnal man has all of the spiritual man operating in his life, but maybe not at a, a mature level because Paul calls them babes here, but he has that potential to grow and develop to be able to handle the weightier matters, okay? So this is the fleshy uh, part of, of us when we're being carnal, right? Even though, yes, we have God's spirit within us, but there are areas in our life where we're fleshy, where we're fleshy, meaning where we're operating and doing some things within this body, you know, flesh and blood. We're made of flesh and blood, right? Um, within this body that does not please God, that is uh, out of alignment with his will for our life, and, and it is, is pulls from our sinful nature, right? Like Paul is saying, you know, you're babes in Christ because, you know, you're clinging to people. You're, instead of clinging more so to God, you're talking about, oh, I'm, I belong to Apollos and uh, I belong to Paul, like you're, you're making groups and cliques and putting us in positions that we don't belong, right? Um, you're envying and, and you have strife going on among yourselves as Christian believers. Paul said, you're carnal. You're saved, yes, but carnal you are. You're fleshy. You're operating um, out of that fleshly, sinful nature. And Paul says, you need to focus on your relationship with God and grow and develop. Don't look to me and Apollos. We work for God. We're just ministers of God. And that's the same for us today. We need to uh, keep our our perspectives and focus on our godly leaders in the right uh, order. And make sure that God is first and pleasing God comes first. And as it relates to the carnal nature that we, we all have fleshy moments. We all have fleshy moments. And sometimes I, I will um, admit before I even have one, I know I'm about to have one. I'm like, wait, let me, I'm about to have a flesh moment. <laughs> because we all have those moments. Because we're still in this human body. But that's not uh, an excuse to continue to sin. Right? We need to always make sure we're working on those areas because God wants us to grow and develop and be mature and not continue to be babes in Christ. Paul teaches what? The babes receive the milk of the word, but then God wants us to grow and develop um, as we're in, in this walk, in, in this race, that we can eat meat, not like literally eat meat, 
meaning that you can handle the weightier matters of the spirit. Yes, that is so true, Deidre. Hey, Takesha. Hey, Moni Love. Um, so, yes. So, what else do I have on my notes? Because, you know, I go on and on. <laughs> so, in Romans chapter 7, read Romans chapter 7, study it out, chapter 19 through um, verse 25. You've heard it before. What Paul says, the good that I would do, I do not. But the evil I would not, that I do. Paul's saying, you know, in my spirit, man, I want to do what's right. But then that fleshy part of me wants to sin. He says, I don't want to sin, but that the, the, the fleshly carnal nature in me wants to sin. And the good that I want to do, I end up not doing it because I end up doing something I shouldn't do. Paul is telling us it's a war going on within each and every believer within ourselves. Let's not even talk about with among other Christians within our own body. We have that tug of war. You know, when we were kids, we watched the cartoons, you have the the good angel and the bad angel. This is that tug of war in the spirit that goes on internally in each and every human being. The good versus the evil. Like, which one do I choose? Which one do I do? There's always that struggle. And so as we grow and mature, good morning, cousin. As we grow and mature in the spirit, which is what God desires for each and every believer, we will be able to do more good than we allow us, our fleshly part of us to control us. And so that is what we are to master this flesh, tame the flesh. Paul says, I have to buffet my body. He said, I have to beat it into submission. Paul is saying, you have to beat your body, not saying physically beat it, but tame it through the spirit of God and through the word of God. Paul says, you have to, it's like a wild beast. Our bodies are, you know, they want to do what it wants to do. But the spirit needs to be the one that controls this body. And so as we continue day in and day out to put it into practice, put the word into practice, continue to tame this flesh, subdue it each and every day, each and every moment. When you get out of alignment, get back in alignment. That's subduing this flesh, right? And so that is our monday's motivation on today i pray that you have received um and we just thank god for uh this day for this week we pray that he would uh guide and direct and order our steps on today we pray that he crown us with wisdom knowledge and understanding we lift up the bereaved keep my uh my daughter in prayer my daughter-in-law to be um uh her she lost her mother amber she lost her mother on last week so keep that family the cox family uh, Mr. Cox and all the, the sisters, Shanta, Kia, Paris, and Amber, in your prayers on the loss of their uh, dear mother, Miss Monica. Uh, keep them lifted. Um, so we pray continually for their strength and comfort uh, during their time of bereavement and others who are going through, uh, who have lost loved ones as well god these are not the blessings we thank god you uh for this word we thank you for each and every viewer and even replay viewer we pray this word over them as well god just continue to have your way in all of our lives and we uh thank you for the victory in advance in jesus name amen and we pray that you will share this out we pray that if this word has um fed you on today that you can be a blessing uh to me i have my my link in the profile um, so you can sow into this word and we will see you on next Monday with Monday's motivation. So toodles, I will come back on Facebook and um, reply to everyone on Facebook. And so we will talk to you soon. Toodles. And my Periscope viewers, let me see who's on here before I sign off so I can shout you out. So we have, hey, cool beings, how are you? Hey, Devetta, hey, Miss Jessica, and hey, Jonathan, I see you. And then I know uh, Camille was here, Miss Camille. We thank God for her and my cousin, Prophetess Lori. We thank God for her and others who have came on and who will come on. So if you are on here on Periscope watching the replay, give hearts, share this out. Sharing is caring, and we will talk to you soon. Toodles, everyone.